Okay. I'm Tammy Thiem. I'm the Library Director at Genoa Public Library, and I'm also the System Peer Coordinator for Antelope, Boone, Madison, Nance, and Platte Counties. And Rosa Schmidt is with us today, too. She is from Oakland Public Library. You want to say, Rosa, what your System Peer Coordinator counties are? Um, oh, I should have my list in front of me. I do not. Um, I don't have it in front of me. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Rosa okay. takes care of Stanton, Colfax, Cumming, Dodge, Burt, and Washington counties. So Thank just you. putting a plug out there that there are two areas of the Three Rivers Library System that use a peer coordinator. They're from Knox, Pierce, Cedar, Wayne, Dixon, Dakota, or Thurston. That area needs a representative. And Douglas, Sarpy, and Cass counties need a representative. And you wouldn't just be thrown out there. Rose is awesome. And she and I would be willing to help and for Gary Jones also. So just a thought. It's a lot of fun. So we had talked about we wanted to do this as a trial because we do quarterly dispel meetings. But it would it's hard for people to get away sometimes. There's travel, there's weather, understaffed. So we thought we'd just try this. <clears throat> as another means of promote it. So this will be worth one CE credit. So if you can submit it independently or you can email me and I can see your names and put it in. And we want to hear from you. This is a meeting where everybody gets to share. So when you speak, if you could say your name, library, and, and your position there, that would be great. Okay, so we will start out with, just like we do at Dispel meetings, I don't know if Rosa does this at hers, yep. but recent successes, and I'll start rattle one off quick. Uh, we just finished a Scholastic Book Fair, exceeded our goal, so the library gets, I think we got like $850, so the library gets $425 worth of free book. If you do Scholastic Book Fairs, you know how awesome they are. They are, and if you don't do them, let me know and I can get you hooked up because it's really cool. So, someone else want to share their recent success? My name is Jenny White, and I'm from the Schuyler Public Library. And we recently moved into a brand new building that was built for us. It was a long time coming, um, but the construction was finally finished and we moved in and we opened our doors um, April 4th. And we um, later on in the month, we had a whole week of uh, special opening activities like a ribbon cutting and a gallery night and a volunteer appreciation evening. And Right now, we're just working out the kinks that you have when you have to move an entire library to a new building. How oh, exciting. Thank you. Anyone else to share some successes? Well, this is Becky at uh, Papillion. Um, we're just, uh, we just implemented the Circe um, ILS. We're about a week, maybe two weeks in. And it's going pretty well. Um, the uh, contract negotiations were a little hairy, but the once you get through all of that, working with the uh, Cersei implementation staff, uh, that was fantastic. And we're just getting used to it again. Some of us have used it before. And it's just really cool. So it went off, I won't say without a hitch, but pretty much without a hitch, which was nice. Um, what wonderful. system did you have before? What's that? What system did you have before Cersei? Koha. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, Koha was fine for, for what it did, 
but uh, we're going to be expanding um, into our city's community center and have a presence over there. And there's just a lot of stuff that Koha just couldn't do that Cersei mm -hmm. will. And it's already, you know, it's like plug and play. And so that was really important for us. Is that an acronym, Cersei? Uh, I don't know where it came from. Um, it's just the name of the company for as long as I've ever known them. Uh, they combined with Dynex. So now they're Cersei Dynex. And I think some people are still on Horizon and we're on Symphony. So those may be some names that you're familiar with. Okay. Yeah. Very exciting. Anyone else? Successes? Or you can go with challenges or any summer reading program ideas? Anything like that? This is a little harder when you don't have a table you can see around to see whose turn is next, isn't it? It is a little trickier. Uh, this is Krista in, at the Nebraska Library Commission. We're hosting the meeting today. I just want to let everybody know that you're all unmuted by default. So you came in after we'd already started. Um, so you're welcome to chime in whenever you want to. You should be able to see everyone who's attending, looking at the attendees. Uh, section of your GoToWebinar interface. And if you do want to mute yourself, underneath the orange arrow at the top of your interface, is that button right underneath there, the green one, you click on that, you self-mute. But otherwise, you guys are all open open mic and able, you know, will, uh, welcome to chat as you want to. Everybody have their summer hey, reading programs lined up. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Here at Papillion, we're not doing um, the uh, one that everybody else is doing. I'm not sure what they ended up calling it. But uh, I think because we've done something like that recently, so they're doing something else. Is there kind of a theme to it then? There is, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> I've been so tied up with this other stuff. So, you know, Kathy's got it under control and... Like, okay, I'll figure it out along the way. <laughs> well, I'm Kathy Stender, and I'm from the Lee Library, and I'm still kind of getting my summer reading program together. Um, I'm hoping to have a gentleman come and do some science experiments with the kids, and um hopefully i can get that worked out hopefully it'll go okay we just recently got a new program at our library too we have alexandria that's made by the companion system we're getting automated with that because when i first started we still just had the old library checkout cards in the library pocket Wow, that's really exciting for you, Kathy. Yes, very exciting. I don't know if I'm going to get it done in a year or not, though, since it's just me and one volunteer. Wow. Do you need some help? Well, the board members have said that this summer, when things slow down a little bit for them, they'll help out. So hopefully they're going to stick to their promise. <laughs> Well, do feel free to keep us in mind. If you need some help, give me a call. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, huge. That's a huge process. It is. Um, I know that maybe a little later we're supposed to talk about whether or not we're registered for that Mark 21 program coming up. I registered for that. I'm hoping that's going to help me along in some of the cataloging process because sometimes you come up with a book and you're just not sure where it belongs. All right. Is anybody else signed up for that? My cataloger was speaking of it. I believe he has registered for it. 
I considered it, but it's it's pretty busy during the summer. It's hard to do it all. <laughs> I will say that when your program has the capability of um, allowing you to copy and paste other cataloging, it makes it so much easier. I took some cataloging classes, but I really love um, the automated way I can download it and then make it our own. Mm -hmm. I agree with, yeah, with you on that. The Alexandria has some of that. But sometimes every once in a while, the book doesn't pop up. And so you end up entering everything in yourself. Okay. Sometimes when you do look for a book and it doesn't come up, it does help to search for it specifically just by title because maybe the um, edition you're looking mm -hmm. up, maybe there are other editions that would pop up. Right. That's a good hint. And I've used that. Sometimes okay. when you search just with title, it does come up. I agree. Yeah, good. But I had this one book that what it is, it, I don't recall the title right now. I'm sorry, but it's a book that describes all the different books that Agatha Christie wrote. Oh. Okay. So the previous librarian had that in the fiction section. But I kind of thought that maybe it should be in the nonfiction section because it's not really telling a story. It's just describing all these different stories that have been told by Agatha Christie. What do you guys think? Maybe somewhere in the 800s. Yeah, is that where they have like um, critique? It's, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Nebraska is, is a great place to search out things like that to see how other libraries have cataloged it. What were you what what place to search? I didn't catch that. I go to Nebraska Access a lot to see how other libraries have cataloged something. Oh yeah, and look in the World Cat. Yes. Okay. I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I um, I, I don't have a Master of Library Sciences, and um, I, I the the training that I have doing cataloging is kind of um, uh, I was instructed by a librarian how to do it at my old place, and she mm -hmm. said that um, the Dewey Decimal System is really good, but it's not cut and dried. It's not perfect, and um, sometimes you have to be uh, you have to be a little, I don't want to say artist, I, it's, sometimes it's an art, sometimes it's a science, and it's a, a blend of both. Um, she thing, did say that logically, just kind of think logically where people would look for this kind of book as a guideline. Yes. The other thing I've done sometimes, if I'm really stuck and WorldCat hasn't done it, um, is to go to the Library of Congress online catalog, catalog.loc.gov. Yes. And uh -huh. even if you can't find a Dewey number, you can find an LC number and then go see what subject headings they've assigned to it and work it backwards oh. that way. Okay. Because even if you just find the subject headings, you know, that, that'll tell you more. Right. And when you're thinking about the Agatha Christie, think of it this way. If you have a, a book that is on uh, Tiger Woods, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a biography of him necessarily, but maybe it's about him and how he's done and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to put it in the golf collection. Right. So right. it seems weird to put a book about Agatha Christie and, you know, to put that in the 800s. But mm -hmm. by that method of thinking, that's where it should go. Okay. Okay, gotcha. Thanks, everybody. Cataloging is weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes you even think about just how big is your library and how many areas do you have? You know, um, 
would it make sense to your patrons if it were shelved with your other Agatha Christie books, maybe the very first book, to give them some assistance in what they want to read? Right. And maybe, yeah, maybe that's why it was where it was. But to me, that didn't make sense. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm inclined to keep fiction in fiction and nonfiction in nonfiction. Right, yeah. right. Has anybody started using the BISAC or sort of the bookstore model? I have not. I have not. I'm, I'm, I've heard of other libraries in the house. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a huge conversion process, but I was just wondering how it was going, if anybody well, here is uh, using it. Um. I'm Connie at Springfield, and yes, we did change to the BISEC uh, method. We were a smaller library, and it was um, a huge undertaking, even with being a small library. But we did it, we moved probably about two to three years ago, and um, we started with our smaller sections and then uh, just uh, did it, you know, scheduled it so that. Um, uh, we we started with YA, which we had a smaller co uh, collection of nonfiction in in YA, and then we moved in to the adult area, and then I think we finished up with children's last. And it has um, it has assisted us in uh, you know assisted our patrons in finding nonfiction, and I think our um, and our statistics have gone up. You know, our checkout statistics. That's good to know. Yeah, it's a it's a lot of work though. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. we had a we had a really good volunteer, and that helped, and um, you know, a lot of um, everybody working together to get it all done. Well, I was just thinking about the library that's converting from cards. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, if you're going to convert anyway, and you think BISAC might work for you, it would probably be easier to just, you know, if you're doing it from scratch anyway. Right. And I had actually thought about that. But I had also thought about then while I'm cataloging the books on the spine of the book, putting the label that identifies which genre it is like western romance mystery that kind of thing i thought about doing that instead of going to that method i'm still thinking about those two i hadn't decided which to do i'd love to hear more about it it sounds like the one person said that it increased their circulation and that's great well there, didn't did gretna go to buy sack i think they did I'm not sure, but there was a uh, Encompass Live webinar um, oh. on this topic um, before before we actually converted, and um, you can still access that. On um, so that um, that kind of spurred me because I've been thinking about it for for a, you know a while before we did before we converted. And um, that kind of spurred me on to do it. And um, and then also I used as a resource uh, the Anything Library in Colorado. Um, you can go on their website and they they use the BISAC um, method also. And so they were a great resource for looking at records because you could look at their records and uh, see how they had what subjects they use. It seems there would be a lot of overlap. That's what is scary about it to me. Uh, it is. It is a little challenging when you're um, cataloging books, but you can look at the subjects. Um, you can use other resources um, to figure out. And we we've had a few issues um, trying to figure out where things go but um, 
overall, um, we usually we think we we have um, placed our books into pretty good um, subject areas. And it's and some of it is you know what your population, uh, you what you think you just have to think about what your patrons would be looking for, and um, kind of I think you have to um, how do I want to say this kind of um, put it where you think they they would be looking for something, and that webinar. Um, is a great resource talking about that too. Do you remember what the name of it was? Um, oh my gosh, it's been, it's been such a while. I do not. Yeah. And maybe I'm, I'm trying to find it and I'm not seeing it. Krista might know. Uh, yeah, I was trying. I was trying to look our search our archives. And oh, it might be in some, I was trying to search using BISAC and it, obviously that wasn't used in the description of the session, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But the most recent thing we have that had to do with cataloging that might have mentioned it was um, about developing local cataloging standards that Emily Nimsikant did. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if she... That was just done in 2016. This is actually, um, you know, as I was searching, since I couldn't find that, I just did a general search in our archives. Um, we have a search feature now in the archives for Encompass Live for just cataloging, and we haven't actually done anything since this one. So I think I need to do an update on. Uh, it might be the. She did mention she did have a link, and she did mention BISAC in that session, though. So that might be the most recent one that we've had. Yeah. So it's a session. It was done on July 6, 2016. It's in our in our archives called Making Your Catalog Work for Your Community, How to Develop Local Cataloging Standards. And I think it might be Killing Dewey. There was that one too. Yep, we had a Killing Dewey session. Um, there's also Life After Mark, after Cataloging Mark. Tools of the Future. Yeah. Yeah, there's Killing Dewey. There that are about doing something different than usual, yeah. That might be a good one to do an update on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like you were saying, and maybe get some people like Connie and if Gretna did it, to even do a panel and talk about what worked and what was hard and you know that kind of thing. And I think things it was they wish, and... things they wish they knew, they'd known when they got started. Yeah. 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 That'd be perfect. <laughs> I will work on that. Yeah, getting some. Yeah, there's somebody else. Maybe it was Blair. Maybe Blair went to BISAC. I can't remember. And they have a fairly new library, right? Yes, they do. It's beautiful. So maybe they did that transition when they changed over? I, I don't remember. I just remember talking with Gail, and I think she said they went to BISAC. And I'm like, holy cow. But I do think it's easier on a smaller collection in some ways because there just isn't that much to look at. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, with a bigger collection, you're going to have more variety that you have to think about. So you might set yourself up better for the future. I don't know. I just remember I worked in a bookstore for about four years, and sometimes that model worked extremely well and sometimes when it got bigger it was frustrating as heck because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know if you if you want a book on a certain battle in vietnam during the vietnam war you know everything's organized alphabetically by author <laughs> even right. if you get the vietnam war then you're still sort of you know going through stuff so i think that's kind of the trade-off point for me you know, how big is the nonfiction collection and how specific do you need to be? Mm -hmm. Yes, the hard, probably the hardest area is your larger section, you know, to get that down to um, like different, the different um, subjects.
subjects and the, you know, to dividing it up. You know, for instance, history and then war. And then if you want to divide it up further and you know, it, it could just go on and on and on. Yeah, to the point where you may as well just use Dewey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's like that's probably like our history section, <laughs> but, yeah. but we did get it down, I think, pretty well. <laughs> Anything okay. else anyone wants to share? Everybody excited to start their summer reading programs or dreading it? Uh, we're excited to start ours. Um, we've, we actually have brochures out just as we, we start reading registration on uh, next Monday and our programs start June 4th. And, uh, but we have brochures out on the front desk just to get people excited, you know, to come back and, and sign up and, and uh, we have, it, it'll be super busy, but we're excited. I'm excited to get it over with. I don't know. <laughs> Any other successes or challenges? This is Becky at Papillion again. I'll chime in if nobody else is going to. Thank you. Um, we ran into it with the friends. Um, well, we went from a governing board to an advisory board and discovered that our agreement with the friends uh, was with the governing board, so it was no longer um, legal. So we had to redo it, and they had a new president, and things, it took quite some time to hash out the agreement between the city and the friends group. Um, anyway... One of the things that came out of that was um, that they had requirements for requesting funds. And we went around on that for quite a while. But I think we finally come up with a form that seems to collect the information that the IRS asks of groups like foundations and friends. So I have a pretty good form now if anybody wants one, <laughs> if you want to see it. Sure. Is that like a 5013C? Uh, they are. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting to see your form. Well, um, anybody who wants it, to, uh, if you want to email me, or do you want me to send it to one person who's got the mailing list? or? Sure, you can send it to me. That's books, B-O-O-K-S, at oakland-library.org. I'm sorry, Oakland? Oakland hyphen, Oakland is O-A-K-L-A-N-D, and then uh -huh. a hyphen, hyphen or a dash, uh, library, L-I-B-R-A-R-Y dot O-R-G. Great, okay. Thanks, Becky. And then if Becky. you want to send it out to anybody, you know, and then yes. just modify it for your use, because I'm not making any guarantees that, you know, people are going to like it. Um, yeah. But hey, you know, it's a start. Since you invested you. so much to hash it all out. Yes, <laughs> oh, my <you>. goodness. <laughs> wow. Okay. Has, okay. has everybody used Talking Books in Braille from the Nebraska Library Commission? Yes. I'm just asking because I just had my first experience with it, have a lady at the nursing home, and it's fantastic. So just wanted everybody to know and to hear about other people's experiences. I when you go not ahead. Used, I've not used it before. I'd be interested to hear. This is Kathy and Lee, and I've never used it before either. We used to have information out about it, but I gather the usage has just dropped off. Oh. 
Hmm. Well, at the nursing home, there's a 90 year old lady who's having trouble with her vision and they asked if we had a lot of audio books. And I said, oh, I think I know something that would be the perfect fit. And it took no time at all. They got the player and a couple of books and the lady is so excited. She still tries to read some large print books, but it's such a struggle with her. This is a great option. And she's just so excited and I'm so excited that we could help. And so if there's anyone in your community who could use something like this, I totally recommend it. Yeah, this is Krista. Um, Becky, were you the one that said you, they think that usage has dropped off? Are you, ta um, you talking in your community? Yes. Do you know why? We don't have we don't have anybody asking for it at all. I think that they are in great part um, just taking advantage of what technology offers to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. It depends on how technologically sophisticated they are. Uh, my brother-in-law is blind. He's in Alabama, but he doesn't use the um, the books that much at all because he just reads off the internet or, uh, oh no, he's got a lot of assistive technology. Um, mm. But uh, there's also apparently an underground of um, people with vision issues who share audio books. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he wouldn't tell me much about it. <laughs> <laughs> But I think that that may be uh, leeching some of the business. Now, uh, people like my grandmother, when she was um, still alive, she didn't want anything fancy. You know, she wanted, you know, hit this button and let it play. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the talking books is marvelous for that. Yes. Yeah, it is. And they've, they've been... Um doing a lot of updates to the system that the players are very, are, it's all going digital. Um, the players now are pretty much like a hit, well, they have been, but a different player, smaller, um, hit the button, let it go. Um, the books, quote unquote, are now on little credit card sized cards that insert into there rather than those big, um, bigger like tape type things. They also have a digital version now that you can do onto any of your devices, Android, app, um, app iPhones, iPads, whatever, Kindle um, as well. So for people who are, you already have those devices, there's a, you can get mm -hmm. now all the things from the talking book and braille. Very nice. I know over the years we have used it a lot, but it's it's slow in between um, patrons. You, you have to have someone who fits that need. And then when you find them and are able to get them set up with it, it is such a rewarding feeling because you know that they're they are getting um, what they need. And really, once we have given them the information and they're set up, there's really nothing for us as a librarian to need to do anymore because the the in Lincoln the commission they take care of them so well I've never had anyone really have to come back and have any issues or any unhappiness they're just thrilled with the service that they have gotten at the commission mm -hmm. yeah we have a staff staff members here that are readers advisors for the program so um, they we and we track what people are reading and give them you know you know, just like you do readers advisory in the library of, uh, well, here's some other titles you might like. And, you know, so it's, it's not just tell us what you want. And we'll send it to you. There's a lot of back and forth between our staff and the people who use the program. Right. Uh, the service. I have um, always explained to families that their, their, their loved one will have basically their own librarian at the commission who will help them find the materials they need. That's pretty much what it's like, yeah, yeah. Your personal, your personal curator of what you might want to read. <laughs> uh, one thing about it too that I think a lot of people don't realize is um, the the talking book in Braille is actually for anyone who, with either visual or physical reasons, can't um, traditionally read regular print, and even for temporary things. So, for example, if someone is injured and they just physically can't hold their book 
and they want to, you know, listen instead, they can uh, they can submit an application and get you know, and you know get access to these these audio books um, for the amount of time they need it for. Um, so, or if there's a, if it's not just a vision reason why they can't read, you know permanently, but uh, a physical reason why. Um, that's what it's, it's, it's for as well. Anyone who just can't use traditional print media. I did not know that. They do still need a doctor's signature or? They or would need a doctor, yeah, someone to sign off and say, here's what's going on, here's, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, there's information on our website all about eligibility and everything and what, what uh, um, Physical disabilities. Um, yeah, and you, yeah, and you, if the, the wording is certified by a competent authority, <laughs> is a doctor. <laughs> I don't know. That's a government technology wording, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and it can be either permanent disability or temporary, and you can do it, yeah. I'm wondering uh, if that would help someone who has cataract surgery. I know I have people who go through a phase where they just can't read. They're uh -huh. waiting to have the second eye done. Their glasses aren't quite up to par. So this could be something that could help them out in the meantime? Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Is everybody here a member of Read Aloud Nebraska? No. no. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. um, what Read Aloud Nebraska is, um, it's just a program that promotes reading, of course, to children. But it's easy to sign up to be a member. And then twice a year, they give free books to members of the to children. But you can only do it once a year, but there's two window frames of time. So like I think last year, I believe I got 59 books that when kids came in, I could just give them books that these are yours to keep. You don't have to bring them back. It's pretty cool. But besides that, they offered a mini grant this year. I think they only gave out two and yay, I got one. Wow. So congratulations. Thank you. Um, so it was a $250 grant that kind of helps. We give a lot of snacks after school for kids. So, I mean, not to mention different activities. So there's a lot of expenses. That $250 can go a long way to help with that kind of stuff. So Read Aloud Nebraska. Um, if anyone wants to say information about it, I can, I can send it to them. I believe it's, I mean, it's from Seward Library is where I get my books from. You have to physically go pick them up, or if you're going to conference, they'll bring them there that time of year. But it's a great program. I Let's like see. that information. Kathy from Lee. Kathy from Lee? Okay. Mm -hmm. And Jenny from Skyler, please. Okay. I've and got Becky, you. Becky from Papillion. Okay. I will get the website, the information out, and send it to you. Well, I guess I know it's not on here, but I mentioned I had just had a book fair. Does anyone else? else do scholastic book fairs at their public library? No. No. Our school does it, so I have never yeah. done it. Mm -hmm. Our school does it in the fall, so we do it here at the spring at the public library. But it's, they send the, sh they pay the shipping, send the boxes to you, you set it all up, you sell books for a week, and then you ship it up and send it back and they pay the postage back. Hmm. So, like I said, our goal was 800, we sold 857, so we got 50% of that, so we got to pick out over $400 worth of books to keep for the library. I mean, it's a huge reward. 
Yeah, I'll that too. If you want any information on that, I've got the Nebraska representative's number and information. Cool. It's a lot of work, but it's, I mean, it's a huge reward, I think. If it's scholastic, do you get mostly yes. soft cover books? Or are you able to get hard covers? There's a variety. Most of it's soft cover, which are cheaper than that way, too. Mm -hmm. Besides that, you can actually go to their catalog. And you can pick out the catalog, too. So you can pick the library bound if you prefer. And then they oh. would, you don't have to pick from just what they have here. You can do it that way. And then they would send it to you without shipping and handling, which to me, I think that's huge, not having to pay that extra expense. I agree. Any way to save money is a good thing. Right. Uh, were there any other questions while you have peer librarians here that are all professionals? By the way, Scholastic is doing a, a warehouse sale in La Vista. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's May 17th. And they give quite a good deal if you have any cash on hand. Um, it is a really good way to fill out your collection. Uh, we use it, uh, we get some money from the Lions Club, and then our big summer pavilion days were able to just hand out books during the parade. Oh, fun. Yeah, the Lions Club does part of it, and the Friends Fund's part of it. And with the sale, you get such a good deal. that it, I think Kathy told me you pay by the box, and boy, can she pack a box. <laughs> <laughs> so it might be worth looking into, if not this year, uh, next year. Mm -hmm. I love that. I know one year I gave out books for Halloween from the Read Aloud Nebraska, and that was such a cool feeling. Yeah. And a parade. Yeah, the Lions I... Club has a has a truck or something, and they just walk along the parade route and just, you know, it's like some people give candy and they give books. Nice. I like that. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I think it's May 17th. Um, I think you have to register for it. I don't know. You you could probably find the information online. Yeah, and it's scholastic.com. Yeah. Pretty basic. And it's like warehouse sale or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. Events, warehouse event, I'm not sure. I could yeah. find out if anybody's interested, you could email me. They have a pretty user-friendly website. Did anyone have any other questions? Yeah. Oh, it's May 8th through 19th. Oh, very good. In La Vista. Nice, they have a window of time. Yeah, they ha they have a put your zip code in search and then tell you what's close by. Okay, well, we'll just keep moving on then. Um, like I said, this was just kind of a trial run to see if an online meeting would work. Does this seem like something that people would like? Thoughts? I think it's a really good idea because sometimes you just can't get away from your office. Sometimes it's really nice to get away from your office. <laughs> or maybe the, weed, the weather's horrible. Mm-hmm. I mean, I really like the face-to-face. -face. I like the dispel meetings. But if I'd had to drive to meet today, I wouldn't have done it. In an hour, does that seem about right? I think so. I 
I mean, to be honest, I had, sometimes. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt, I'm sorry. I think depending on what we're talking about, maybe more. Yeah, I kind of thought going forward, maybe each one would have a more specific topic. Today, I really had no idea what to expect or how many people. So it was just pretty general. I do agree that sometimes it's nice to get out of your office, but to be honest, I had totally forgotten about it till I looked at my calendar and I'm like, oh, I can, I can still log on and join the meeting. So um, I like the, the convenience of a, a WebEx meeting as well. Is Monday a good day for it or should we rotate days? Monday's really not good for me, so maybe rotate. Yeah, like today happens to be my day off, so I'm sitting here at home. <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> yeah, then maybe we'd be able, not everybody would be able to come every time, but maybe would be mm -hmm. a fit if we could rotate it. Yeah. I think that'd be great. Does 1230 to 130 work well? Well, that's lunchtime, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, being lunchtime, sometimes that helps. Yes. yes, right. I think because we're all, we don't, we don't plan a, a whole lot of activities around lunchtime. So I think that works. Mm-hmm. So next month on Tuesday? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Do you want to say first Tuesday of the month, which is June 5th? Thank you. I was just going to look that up. So June 5th at 1230? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. This is Krista. We can do that. Thank you, Krista. Available. <laughs> and Tuesdays would work for this. The only thing, time that, of course, would not, um, since we use this as the GoToWebinar system that we use for um, Encompass Live, as you guys mentioned, um, Wednesday mornings would be the only time that it's always booked. Mm -hmm. um, but if you move things around um, in the future, we can all, you know, almost everything else is probably available. Well, if we just, you know, every month progress one day through the week and then say, okay, it's going to be around lunchtime, then we can build a, ske a schedule off of that and mm -hmm. see what's going to work. Right. And I think we can try to be flexible if someone says, oh, that will never, ever work for me. Well, if it's going to fall on the 4th of July, you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah, we're closed on the 4th of July, so we aren't yeah. doing anything today. As we all are, yes. Just be nice to try to accommodate so at least everybody can come once in a while. And I wouldn't yeah. expect everybody to have to be here every time. But it's nice to have a resource if you have a question. There's going to be someone who's experienced that same problem or has really good ideas on it. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I think this would be a good resource for everybody. The July meeting would fall on the 4th. It would if you're going. <laughs> yeah. So that one you might bump to Thursday to make it. Yeah. 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 Thursday the 5th? Yeah. All right. Awesome. And I know I had thought about having topics or speakers, but you know, Chris already offers that each week for Encompass Live. Mm -hmm. So I think it would probably be more of a communications meeting, as in everybody gets a platform 
to share or complain or ask questions or whatever they need at that time. Does everybody agree that sounds pretty good? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Yep. good. Yes. Yes. I agree. Um, just some things going forward. The dispel meeting for, for my group, which anybody can come to them, even if they're not from those five counties, is at Orchard Public Library at noon, from 9.30 till noon on May 22nd. Rosa, did you have one planned for the next quarter? No, we don't yet. Okay. I think you just had one, so. Mm -hmm. And again, if anybody has an interest in being a system peer coordinator that's in the other counties that aren't already represented, it's a lot of fun. Um, Norfolk Literature Festival, does anybody attend those? Well, I have never gone. Has no one else ever gone? Um, I think that I've had my children's people go before and they did not find it that useful anymore. They thought it was really good to go a couple of times, but then they're like, okay, you know, mm. we've done it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. We've got other stuff we need to do too. Right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's anyway, July 28th. It's a great way to get CE credits, and it is a lot of fun. They have different authors there every year. I'm not going this year because I'm going to be going to the Plum Creek Liter Literacy Festival, which is in Seward. But. Put it on my calendar, but I'm not Just wanted to throw that out there. And of course, the Encompass Live is every Wednesday morning, and sessions record recorded so archives are available but it sounds like everybody's already familiar with that but I think that's a huge resource mm -hmm. and um, does everybody read their newsletter from Three Rivers Library System or at least skim through it when you get it yes 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 so that's a good way to spotlight your library. I think Chelsea's always looking for information to fill it. So I think that's a good idea too. If you ever have anything exciting happen, I think she'd really be happy to hear from you. Just a thought. Um, anybody else have any upcoming events that they would like to share? Uh, this is Krista. I just wanted to, while you were, you were mentioning that Encompass Live is recorded, um, for some of you that did, may have come in later um, uh, and didn't realize, we are also recording this meeting, and we're going to continue with recording them for people who can't make it on whatever times they are scheduled. And I'm going to be, Tammy and I talked about it before we started today, <clears throat> I'm going to be posting them up to our YouTube account and the Library Commission's YouTube account like I do with Encompass Live. So, um, that will get sent out um, this afternoon and send her the link and then she can share it with um, with everybody. So just so you know, if there are some of the dates and some of the topics and you can't you know, make it that day, there will be an archive of it, of, of these meetings as well. Great. Thank you, Krista. Anybody else have anything coming up? I was glad to hear about the Scholastic warehouse fair or sale that's fun or any other questions well that was all I had on the list then But if anyone has any more to say, please speak up. I'm good. Okay, well, I thought it was a lot of fun. I took a lot of notes. Well, thank you for, for hosting this. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming, everybody, and thank you, Krista, for doing this for us. Yeah.
Yeah, no problem. Happy to do it, of course. Thanks, Tammy. You bet. Thank you. Okay, thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.